In this video, I'm gonna be fixing a problem of not having enough lights in a room. This is a break room me and my employees use when we're at the woodshed. We often use this space as a computer work area and break room, which is great, but it's just too dark. It's actually really simple to add lights to any space. So in this video, I'm gonna do just that and show you the steps in case you have a room in your house that needs the same. The first thing to do is locate the joists and figure out which way they're running. You basically want to know where the joists are so that you can avoid them. What I did to figure out my light layout is first decide how many lights I wanted in the space. I chose eight. Then I measured the length of the ceiling space and divided it into equal parts for the number of lights. For my space, I wanted two rows of four lights each and my ceiling is 274 inches long. That means I'll have a light every 55 inches. You can do the same math for dictating the placement of rows. However, I placed these by eye instead. I have a ceiling fan in the center of the room, so I picked a placement by eye, then matched that measurement on the other side. I do recommend not getting too close to the walls because the light will cascade down like this, and if this is hitting a wall, then it will create something like this or just die off. So place it kind of out to where you'll get the full beam of light. Now, you can very well go through the ceiling and make a bunch of pencil marks. However, I instead use rows of painter's tape to make a very quick visual guide. It goes up and down quickly and is also very easy to see. It's very handy if you have a 6'5 friend who doesn't require a step stool to press the tape on. At this point, I went to each light location and ran a screw in just to double check that I wasn't on any joists. If you are, then move the location one way or the other before getting going. I was all good, so next I started prepping for drilling holes. There is a variety of tools you can use for cutting holes in drywall, but a cheap specialty tool definitely worth picking up for this job is called an adjustable hole saw cutter. It has teeth that rotate in a circle on a drill and it's adjustable, so you just need to match it to the size of your fixture. Before getting after it, I next made a dust shield. Drilling into drywall above your head is going to create a huge mess. They do make plastic shields, but I didn't pick one up. So instead, I grabbed an old basketball and cut it in half. After drilling a hole in the bottom, I could poke my drill through and grab onto the hole cutting tool. Now when I cut into the ceiling, most of the dust will be captured in the bowl instead of going all over the house. However, drywall is still nasty stuff, so you can see I'm still wearing a respirator. By the way, if you're curious about anything I'm using, I've left you links down in the description. Oh, also, if you don't have a basketball to cut up, you can cut the top off of a bucket. Okay, so the next thing to do is determine where the power source is gonna be coming from. In my case, I have these pendant lights that are really low hanging, doesn't put out a lot of power. And so what I'm gonna do is take these off, put in a blank in the ceiling, but I am gonna steal its switch so that this switch, it will be the power source that'll daisy chain off to power all of my new lights. So that whenever I come in, this switch, instead of doing this one pendant light, will then operate all of my lights. So in your case, um, it's really great if you have an old switch that you're using the new lighting to replace completely because that makes it simple. But if that's not the case for you, then you just need to find some sort of power switch, either an outlet or an existing switch. My room is actually a room built within a bigger shell. So the insulation is on the ceiling of this attic space instead of on the floor, which makes my job here even more simple since all the bays are nice and open. But if you do this job, you might have to move some insulation around. Now I'm in the attic space and what I did is locate that pendant light that I just disconnected in the corner, which is right over there. I located the Romex coming off of it and now I'm gonna be routing it to my first hole, which I'm going to the furthest hole first. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, now I ran a separate piece of Romex from this hole to that hole to start actually daisy chaining off. So this is just kind of roughed in. I have my link. I have extra links so that later I can staple it to the joist here. Now I'm gonna pick this up. I'm gonna leave myself plenty of space and I'm just gonna cut somewhere down here. You should have about six inches past the hole. There we go. And then I'm gonna stick it back down there. Now I'm gonna repeat on the other holes. I'm gonna be coming up from this hole down into this one. Again, you just wanna have about six to eight inches just to where you have enough wire to work with whenever then you move to making your terminations. Once it's in place, I'm gonna pick it up and make a cut. 
Each unit comes with two components, the transformer and then the light itself. You can see how low profile these things are, but each one comes with two springs on the side to where you'll be able to straighten these out, insert the disc, and then whenever it's inside the drywall, these will spring down and that's actually what holds the fixture up into place. This you can attach to the joist with the attachment here, and then you can just uh, hardwire it into the transformer and then plug and play right there in between the two units. So I'm actually gonna disconnect them like this in order to make wiring in the transformer a little bit easier and then I'll connect this in afterwards. After running the Romex, it's back down to the space to start stripping wire and terminating connections. For lighting, I'm going with the recessed disc lights. These are quickly taking the place of can lights, which used to be the old go-to for jobs like this. But these are not only easier to install, but also cheaper. The LEDs, so good efficiency, and a lot of them have adjustable color temperature as well. If you ever need to take the light out, you just have to tug on it and the springs on the back will straighten out until it passes through the hole. And that's it. Now you go to the attic, attach to the transformer. And look how low profile and cool that is. Now, before letting you go, let me thank this video's sponsor, which is Tough Built. I've been utilizing Tough Built's ClipTech tool belt system and I am highly impressed with the design and function. Every pouch in the system is the same and it has two parts that allows you to quickly put it on or take off an entire bag without having to remove your belt. So in the morning when I get to the job site, I can pick up which bag is needed for the day and clip it right on. Then once that job is done, I can just as quickly shed it. The clips are also designed to be mounted. So I bought an extra pack of clips and screwed them into the wall so that whenever I remove a pouch, I can place it neatly on the wall where it's always ready to go and organized. Another great built-in design idea is the kickstand. A lot of their pouches have a kickstand on the back that can quickly be deployed should you find yourself in a position where the pouch is better off of you instead of on you. Tell me that's not awesome. Tough Belt has a huge variety, so regardless of what trade you're into, there is a pouch made for you. Or if you're more of a drill of all trades like me, then I recommend picking up several and having them stocked with the trade tools so that you're ready to go and organized. Big thank you to Tough Built for supporting what I do. If you'd like to check out their Clip Tech tool bags, then I've left you links down below. But I also recommend checking out their awesome knee pads and saw horses. I fully stand behind all of these products. Okay, the last thing in the project to do was take the tape down before the fixtures go all the way in. And it's as simple as that, I was done. Oh my goodness. I don't know if it can get more simple. So if you have a dark room or area, then I hope this video has given you the confidence to tackle a job of adding lighting to it. Again, I've left you links to everything I use down in the description and I'll see you on whatever I'm working on next.